Hi everyone, just going to be running through some examples again for the new book for Black Belt Statistics and Statistics using Minitab 18 Black Belt Edition. If you want to work along with us, you can download the data sets from my website rmk6sigma.com. So this is the third video now when we've already covered binary and ordinal and now we're going to do nominal logistic regression. With logistic regression, uh, it's the case that our response variable is categorical and it has different levels. So ordinal and nominal both have more than two levels, but the difference between the two, as is examples that I've given, is that ordinal has uh, an order to the categorical responses. And I've given the example of the Olympic Games where we have gold, silver and bronze medals. And with nominal logistic regression, they don't have an order. And here the example is people's TV watching habits in the evening. Let's say they like watching sports, documentary or fiction. We can't give an order to those categorical levels. We're going to be working through example 7.4.2 called check-in. So this example is to do with an airline and their check-in service. So if you remember during pre-COVID times when we used to fly to different places, there were three methods of check-in. You could either check in at the desk, check in online, or use one of their checking machines. So that's what the example's about. And hopefully after pre-COVID times, we'll be flying again. So let me just read the example scenario to you. An airline wants to understand if they can build a model which describes the method that people choose to check in with. The customer can decide to check in online, at a machine, or a check-in desk. So that's our three categorical levels for the response. Data is collected on the following possible continuous predictors. Age, being the age of the person conducting the primary ticket booking process and cost being the total cost of the tickets booked. So those are our two continuous predictors. Then we have three categorical predictors as well. First of those is booking, whether the booking was for an individual or a group booking. Carry on, so no indicates that luggage for the hold was pre-booked and yes indicates only carry on luggage was taken onto the flight. And then seating, so pre-booked indicates that seating was selected during the flight booking and an allocated indicates that the airline allocated seating at check-in. So as the process improvement consultant helped the airline build a model with significant associations between predictors and the response. So I'll just remind you again, the response is the method that the customer chooses to check in with, and it's got three levels. So you can either check in online, check in at one of those machines at the airport, and I've got a picture that shows you those machines that you can use to check in with, or whether you go to the desk. There's a second part to the question as well. In the second part of the question, display event probabilities against significant predictors in the most appropriate way. Now, if you want to work along with the example, you can download the data set from rmk6sigma.com. So here's my data in Minitab. I've got five predictors in columns one to five, and here's my response. So my predictors, as I told you just now, age, age of the person doing the booking, cost, is also a continuous predictor and it's the total cost of the tickets. Then I have my three categorical predictors, the booking type, whether it's group or individual, whether there's carry on luggage or not, and whether the seating was pre-booked or allocated by the airline. And then for the response, I wanna know whether I can link any of these to my response and the three levels for the response are whether the check-in was done by the customer at the machine at the desk or online. Let's run the regression. Stat, regression, nominal logistic regression. Okay, my response is check-in. And then for my model, I need to enter all five of my predictors. And then I need to state which of the three categorical predictors, booking, carry-on, seating, and then click OK. OK, let me just enlarge this window for you. In fact, let's go to full size. OK, the first thing I want to look at is the response information. And I see that Minitab has selected online as the reference event. OK, I could have selected which reference event I was going to choose, but I'm fine with online. I'm going to skip over the logistic regression table for now and just go to the test of all slopes equal to zero. 
Now, the significant p-value here is telling me that at least one of my predictors has a significant uh, effect on the response. So I'm happy with that for now. And then I'm just going to look at the goodness of fit tests as well. And I have two high p-values. Now, these tests uh, are telling me whether the data fits the model or not. So that's the null hypothesis for these tests. And I can't reject the null. I've taken the logistic regression table and I've put it into PowerPoints uh, so I could draw some rectangles. As you can see, there's a blue one and a red one with uh, broken lines. And I've done this so I could show you how nominal logistic regression works. Previously, I've said that we've got three categorical levels to the response and that online was selected as the reference event. In the top box, which is the blue one, which is called Logit1, I've got the comparison in terms of using the odds ratio of going from machine to online. In the bottom box, the red dashed line, we've got Logit2, which is a comparison for the odds ratio from going desk to online. So then we can examine each of these two boxes uh, to see which are significant and what the odds ratios are. We've seen how nominal logistic regression works. Now what we need to do is reduce the model. Let's look at the p-values for our predictors. What we have to do when we want to remove a predictor is check that the p-value is not significant in both Logit1 and Logit2. So age, significant there, and it's significant in Logit2. Cost, not significant in Logit1, not significant in Logit2. Booking is significant, so that's fine. Carry on not significant in logit 1, not significant in logit 2. And then what we see is seating is not significant in logit 1, but it is in 2, so we can't remove that. So the ones that we need to remove in a stepwise method are cost and carry on. So I'm going to do those now. Let's remove carry on first. it's a categorical I have to delete it from both boxes click OK and just check if anything's changed nope so cost is still not significant in either function so I can remove that as well that's just in the top box because it's a continuous predictor click OK okay so this should be our final model let's just check our goodness of fit tests yeah, the p-values are both high, so we know the data fits the model. We can start looking at the predictors now and looking at the odds ratios. Remember, the interpretation of the odds ratios is different for a continuous predictor and a categorical predictor. So the one significant continuous predictor that we've got is age. We've got a negative coefficient, so that's telling me that as age increases, the probability of going from machine to online is decreasing. And the odds ratio is telling me for every year that age increases, the odds ratio is multiplied by a factor of 0.94. And because you're multiplying by something that's less than one, you're decreasing the probability. So as you get older, you are less likely to go from a machine booking to an online booking. OK, let's have a look at booking, which has two, in, two levels, individual and group. And it's one of the categorical predictors. We have a look at the odds ratio is 0.13. So this is telling me if the person was doing an individual booking, the probability of going from machine to online is pretty low for the individual booking. But if it was for the group booking, it would be much higher. In fact, it would be 1 divided by 0.13. Because remember, interpretation of categorical predictors is slightly different. This is how we interpret categorical predictors. So it's to do with the ratio of the probabilities. If I go back there, so you can see if the um, setting had been grouped, it would probably be a factor of uh, over five higher in terms of probability if it was a group booking and then you wanted to go from machine to online. Finally, we get to the last part of the question, which is about displaying the event probabilities. So first of all, we need to generate those. Click on edit last, click on storage, and I've got three categorical levels for my response. And I want to store event probabilities. Click OK. Click OK again. So you can see there I've got three new columns now, EPROB 1, 2, and 3. So because I know the order 
that my levels were listed at online machine desk so that's how they're listed here online machine and desk now I can draw these in a the scatter plot and we want with connect and groups click OK and then probability always goes on the y-axis so e prob 1 against age which is my continuous predictor e prob 2 against age e prob 3 against age and then I can put in my categorical predictors for grouping and the two significant ones that I had were booking and seating click OK to generate the graphs Okay, you can see I've got three great graphs for interpretation now EPROB 1, 2 and 3 OK, I'll let you do the interpretation of those so that ends the series of videos on logistic regression I hope you enjoyed those uh, please subscribe and have a look at buying the book if you found these useful thank you and see you next time